Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm, I'm about to dive into a 30 minute session. This is gonna be really off the charts interesting. I'm this The background story of what I'm gonna be exploring in this session is well worth reading. So I'm actually gonna copy and paste it into the description. It's kind of a one of a kind experience, but it, it's got some paranormalness to it, some alienness, uh, um, psychicness. I mean, there's just so many different aspects to it. But through this experience, the client has now been having trouble feeling um, joy um, in his heart and uh, being able to sleep at night for about a year and a half now and is having to take very um, powerful sedatives in order to sleep. So, so really the main focus, we need to, we need to see what kind of answers we can come up with. I know this is, this session is for energy parasites, archons, alien implants, demons, negative entities, etc. Because <laughs> anything that, that is kind of in this realm, um, that's what we're going to be working on. I, I will say I do not feel that this is an archon issue, but I will just keep it open and we'll just see what we run into, Okay. But whatever answers that we can come across or perspectives to make sense of this. And then definitely I want to focus on your heart and healing that. I mean, there's just so many different directions I could go with with what you've been through. So many different angles. So for starters, I'm going to do that, okay? We're going to focus on what can we do to help you sleep again? What can we do to understand what you've been through? What can we do to bring the happiness and joy back into your heart? What can we do to help life uh, move back into a version of normal again? Okay. Oh, thank you so much for connecting with me and giving me the opportunity to help you and learn from your experience. And thank you too for sharing. A lot of people are going to be intrigued and I think we can all learn a lot from, from this. So I'm going to relax now and get connected. Let's see what we come across here. Okay, so my target point is to go into your heart, but again, I'm still just going to keep it open. You're kind of, I mean, what what, what do I want to describe this as? Let's just say a, a Venus flytrap, but it's more of a flower. And it's holding you tightly, and you're inside of it, okay? And everything is dark around, and I do hear whispering noises. And so there's a layer here. So here's a circle. We're in a sphere. Walk into the sphere, okay? In the sphere, it's all dark. I hear whispering noises in this layer. And then there's this flower, this dark flower, and then you are inside of it. So that is the first thing I'm experiencing. You're actually in the flower to protect yourself. The flower hasn't uh, consumed you. You've chosen this as a way to shut out, to protect you. And it is actually working, but obviously this is no way to live either. And I encourage you to come out of the flower. I'm actually, the, I tell the flower that your time is complete because it's now time to face this one. For you to face this, my friend, is going to teach you so much about your soul and so much about the power of your psychic gifts. And um, it could really help you open, um, help you to help other people. <laughs> it's going to help you. And then it's going to help you to help other people. <laughs> a lot's going to good. A lot good is going to come from this. Okay. So it's time for the flower to diminish and it's time for you to come out. And you've kind of glued yourself in. So when the flower uh, withers, you're kind of glued into it. And I will say there's a lot of sadness here. And I mean, you're literally glued. I, I can see clear glue kind of splashed around yourself and you're just stuck in there. And it's not easy to detach you from the flower, which is safety. And the reason 
for the fear is the unknown. The unknown is is scary because we don't know if it is to harm or to help. We don't know how to process it. And without a true understanding of our actual psychic ability, we feel kind of at the will of it or a victim to it instead of knowing how to um, talk to the experience and come to a harmony and either decide I want to continue with it or I want to move on from it. So this is sort of the next step in your psychic development. I mean, this experience is to is a psychic development teacher. It is to teach you to either become the victim of something that is uh, more extraordinary than you, which isn't true. You're more extraordinary than it. The meditations that you are doing, the psychic gifts you are working with were ph phenomenal. And here you have a test stepping into the meditation. Are you going to face that fear or are you going to hide from it? And when you hide from the fear, the fear controls you now, okay? So when it's a tangible fear, like uh, I'm afraid of roller coasters, we can, co we can work with that, right? But when it's an untangible fear, as I had an experience I don't know how to explain and nobody really is going to be able to understand it either, um, how do you deal with that fear? How do you face a fear like that? You have to use the gifts that you've been developing, and you have to work with them as the teacher. So the gifts you've been developing and now this experience becomes the teacher. And you're the student that is going to work through this test, okay, um, in order to conquer it and go to the next level. And I will say that everything you've been through, you're going to, you can face this and you can get to the next level and you will see this beneath you, okay? Y you can do this. But let me see what... What I'm going to just keep moving through here and I'm going to try, I'm going to clear out anything I can. So that actually, me telling you this gives you strength because you already um, decided that it is time to let go of the flower and you removed the glue. <laughs> you're like, no, you're not removing me from this. I will glue myself to it. <laughs> well, you removed the glue. So you're coming towards me now. And I give you a hug and I tell you how proud of you I am. All right, this is quite loud. There's a very loud thing. And it's huge. I mean, what is it? <laughs> it is enormous. It has a long snout, like an elephant. Um, but it's more like erect. Like it's not going to go flop. It's like straight forward. And it's huge. Um, it could suck us up like an anteater sucking up ants. We're like an ant in comparison to how huge this thing is, is like an anteater snout or something. Um, and it is black. It is, if it's an archon, it's the most, it's definitely got an unusual looking face. It's got like furriness to its face and it's got lots of eyes like a spider would have. It's got many legs too. And it's kind of squid-like because it does have the many legs coming out the back side. Um, but it's more like a spider, a very unusual spider. But it has many legs. It has like hundreds of legs. And it's big. And it's noisy. And I tell you, just stand here. Just stand here and look at it. All we have to do is just stand here and look at it. So we are. And what I do is I show you how you can alter perception. So you don't have to be the size of an ant in comparison to this thing because this thing is really like the size of an atom. And then you are the size of the universe. So now when we change perspective, you're the size of the universe and this is just this tiny little thing. Now it's like a little pea on your plate and you just go squish. And now it's not as scary, right? <laughs> because we are bigger than it now. You know, it's all perception, but it does help. So what I do is I alter perception. So now this thing is really small and it's just sort of in the palm of your hand, okay? And I tell you that this, is, this thing is your teacher and you need to be thankful for this teacher because it's going to teach you. It's going to make, it's going to help you become wise. And uh, so this thing hears me speak 
and it actually emanates um, some vibrations of love, but it's trying to tell me something. Um, it actually sings a song of some kind, and it feels like um, the runt of the litter. I know it sounds strange, but I keep thinking of like cute little kittens because it's got a furry little face and it kind of looks cuter when it's smaller. So I think of like the runt kitten of the litter and there's something cute about it. Anyway, it's there's something cuter about it now. But we're, we're just going to walk down this very massive tunnel. Feels like there's a lot more here. And I will say this massive tunnel, I don't, I mean, if I were to define where, where this is lodged at, I mean, where this tunnel is connected to some, is it connected to your heart? Is it connected to your mind? Is it connected? Where is it? Uh, somehow you're kind of in the hose of it. So let's just say it's, it's connected to all of you. So let's just go through here. And I just see the little thing just turn into, it just disappears. It's just a nothing. I mean, it looks like a little cat toy or something and it just, it loses its life force energy. It just disappears. And I will say you, as we walk through this tunnel, I mean, you continue to size yourself really small. Are you doing that because you don't want to be seen, because you don't want to interact with this, because you don't want to face this? Or do you just feel small in comparison to this? So again, I have to teach you how to um, see this as much smaller than you are and you much bigger. But this is quite a substantial jam and I have no idea, I mean... Let's just start by feeling the texture. It's, it's just like the, a mouth, the mouth of a cave, okay? And it's enormous. It's just like the size of a mountain. And it's, um, it's got a cover um, so I can touch it. And it's like a clear like a slime, but it's like thicker than that, you know? Like it's fun to touch. It's fun to squish. It's satisfying slime, but <laughs> it doesn't like squish out. Like we can't, it's not like cutting a hole in it or anything. I'm just touching it. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually just place my hands and just share love with it here starting to feel this this is really more and more rooted into your heart then i mean it's just such a big thing it's almost like it swallowed you whole but it is really connected to your heart mm. just dissolving this down Okay, there's going to be some weird um, frequency patterns going on. So what I mean by that is that when I place my hands here and share love with this, it's dissolvable, okay? Everything that is... Mm, not in balance with love, so to speak, will dissolve from love or it will run away. So love will dissolve the impurity, so to speak, okay? So when I dissolve this, it should just dissolve, but um, it's almost like it's creating um, its own manipulative illusions, like um, it's creating a hologram that it's still there even if it's not there anymore. So it's creating... Um, very realistic illusions, but I can tell that it's illusions because it's manipulative energy. Manipulative energy is really obvious. So I have to figure out what, what we're going to do here. Okay, I'm going to do this. I just, just take this whole thing. I don't even know what all it is, and I'm just going to make it smaller, make it a lot smaller, and then so that way we can work with it. I'm not going to walk through this tunnel of weirdness. You're going to be honest with me. What are you? Who are you? Why are you? <laughs> why are you, why aren't you just standing here? What what is this? Okay. Still figuring it out. And I'm doing a really good job with it. 
I'm really proud of myself because this is, is this is a very 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 complicated energy. Alright, so what could I explain happening here? I will say there's no whispering. Um, it's very, it's getting more and more dense. Whatever this tunnel is, everything has consciousness. So, um, you know, it's a door, but the door has consciousness. So we have this sort of giant cave opening, but the cave opening itself has a mind, has a reason, has an existence. It's just like that little, tiny, cute little thing that was in our hand, it, would, it had consciousness only for so long as it, it needed to complete itself. Then it's just whatever it is now. We don't know what it is now. So for me to make sense of what is the door itself and what is the space itself, um, what is it as a conscious being, um, I'm working on formulating that. As I'm formulating that, um, I also experienced us moving very, as very, very small little particles through what is like um, a very dense void, okay? And it's silent throughout here. And we are making progress. We're continuing to go deeper. And you have a lot of your deep selves know about this thing. But... I will say again that let's just say um, you have hundreds and hundreds of deep self um, versions of you that are aware of this. And of, let's say, a thousand of them, um, 800 of them are choosing to be super, super small. And then 200 of them are trying to get a message through to you to um, try this, do that, um, don't take the sedatives anymore, or um, you need to face this thing, or, or all the little whispers of uh, in inspiration that we're not ready to try those out yet. Um, and then the rest of you is just really small from this experience, which feels too big for you to face it. So, so I'm just saying this to give you perspective here on what's going on deep down inside of you. And th this, is, um, this has become like a really big thing when we need to keep working on making it smaller and smaller and smaller. And we need to work on bringing all these other selves of you um, bigger and bigger and bigger. That way you can conquer this one. You really can do it. I'm still going through with you. We're little particles and we're just going through this still. And why don't we just, why don't we take on some of the beautiful energies, all right? Um, just pure love, okay? Why don't we just take pure love with us? What is pure love like? If you can't feel it, what does it remind you of? How about the sound of purring kittens um, and a little kitty cat snuggling with you at night as you're a kid, you know? How about um, the best day with a best friend and you're in second grade? Um, some of these brightest, loudest memories could be from our childhood um, and they can remind us of what love is because they're the most purest Maybe our, our first kiss or um, maybe it was the nervousness and conquering um, fear and how proud of yourself that you were after that. So we take these memories of times when and we use those memories. They're our library of energies. When we're struggling to access the energies ourselves, we go into our library of memories and then we decide which memories um, remind us of what we're trying to access. And we pull in that energy, okay? So, we're, we're both going to brighten our hearts. And it is safe for you to brighten your heart, okay? I know you're talking about the pink energy. And when that kind of comes out, it seems hard for you to sleep. 
that's still a mystery here. I, I don't know what that is about just yet. I'm still working on what the, the structures are that I'm running into first related to what you're going through. Okay, so we're going to continue to brighten our hearts. We're going to continue to feel love. We're going to continue to be in gratitude of the experience. We're going to continue to know that it is safe. It is safe for you to feel love inside your heart. Something told you that it isn't. And the more love that you have in your heart, the more loud or noticeable you are. So um, we got to make sure to quiet quiet your heart so nobody can find you when really what finds you is um, what likes dimmer hearts, you know, what likes to be around a dimmer heart. So when your heart is really bright, you're way more powerful than you can imagine. So we got to get the light back inside of you again. So we're still like pulsating the love, okay? <laughs> like pulsing it. We're doing that. We are doing that. I don't know why, but uh, suddenly appears a trampoline. And uh, we just stop right here. And you and I get on the trampoline and we both just start jumping and laughing. And we're afraid of jumping into each other. We're afraid of falling off the edges. And we just keep laughing. And then you try and do a jump. And then I go way up high 10 feet. <laughs> and then we just keep laughing and jumping. And it just makes everything so much better. This is really great. <laughs> So we're doing that right now. And the more brightness and the more laughter we create, things start to move in weird ways, okay? So your emotional gut, I'm feeling it. Your third eye, I'm feeling it. And it feels disorienting. It feels um, like very disorienting. So let's just keep doing funny things. Like let's keep laughing. Um, Let's keep laughing and doing funny things. Ugh. Ugh. I'm, I'm like literally stretching out a lot of energy movement. So we keep doing this. So we'll just keep laughing and having fun over here. All the while, I don't know what it is, but I keep, I'm in a crystal store and I keep seeing a very intense purple, like amethyst crystal and it's like an amethyst point and it's not perfect, like, um, but yet there's something exceptionally beautiful and, and captivating about this crystal. And so I have this crystal and I take it from the crystal store and I bring it into our dimension and I say, here, um, you need this, this is for you. And you say, oh, oh, that's pretty. And we don't know what to do with it just yet. We're just, you're just holding it right now. And this is quite interesting. Wouldn't have expected this from Amethyst, but um, it seems to be opening up a portal inside of itself and it's sucking in all of this darkness. The dark void is just going... It's just like literally sucking it in through the amethyst is like created a portal inside of itself and it's just like sucking it in through that portal and it's taking it out of you. Oh man. Let's see, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Just, I guess just wait is kind of what they're, just give it time. So we're just going to keep letting the amethyst do its thing. Okay. Okay, the amethyst is still doing its thing, but we are now, um, the, the darkness is an illusion. So it looks like a void, an infinite void, but it's actually not as infinite as it was saying that it was. And as the amethyst sucks in more of the darkness, we start to realize that um, the space is full of bright things, bright and beautiful things. And it was trying to hide that from you. And it was doing a very good job of it. But now that start, it's, it's all starting to get sucked in here, let's just call this a Garden of Eden that we're standing in because it's vibrant green earth. It's like new earth or, you know, however you want to look at that. It's just a pristine, healthy nature. It's beautiful. And, okay, the next thing, there's a, the next thing, what is this? The amethyst is all but uh, done everything that it's called to do. I'm not, 
and uh, you're sitting down and you're feeling exhausted and bewildered. Um, you feel kind of lost in your own mind. You feel like, um, I mean, you had mentioned how you were in a mental institution um, for three weeks. And this is kind of reflecting what, I mean, it takes what is Garden of Eden and the triumph and it puts it into a man in just a white kind of hospital gown. And he's just kind of like all, like he's projects out what is like eight parts of himself. And they're kind of aimlessly and mindlessly walking around, even walking into walls and confused and saying, where am I? Well, where am I? Where am I? I mean, they literally keep saying it like that. And they walk into walls and things. And all the while, they're trying to send information back to you at, as to where you are, or what is going on. And you're so delirious, like you have no freaking clue. Like you're totally out of it. And you can't even tell or experience the Garden of Eden that you're actually sitting in. Both realities are true. So I know this may sound crazy, but this is the truth. So while you were in the, this mental institution and having this experience, um, you were simultaneously um, in a Garden of Eden, okay? Because realities overlap each other. So wh which reality are you in? You're in both of those realities. We just need to bring all the selves back to you and transform your relationship with what happened and all the events that the traumatizing events to bring it back to you are, I am in a garden of Eden. I am in a new earth experience. And no matter which version of earth you, you are experiencing, you're always in new earth, no matter what, because all realities are overlapping each other. So you choose to focus on where it is that you choose to be. And then that becomes the reality you choose to experience, right? There's so much more going on in here, but we're just going to keep going through the layers as they come and we're just going to keep clearing stuff out, okay? Because this is quite a big phenomenon. This is a big event and it, it had a lot of impact. So there's going to be a lot to walk through and clear out. It's very hard, I will say, to bring these selves back into you. I mean, it's like they just like um, you lost a, lost a part of yourself, but it's like you lost selves, and those selves that you lost um, are just mindlessly um, walking without ever finding their way. So they're lost, and those selves are still sending information back to you that you're lost as well. In in some part of you, you do feel that way. Okay, you do feel lost in a part of yourself. This is not easy. I mean, I should be able to just say, hey, let's bring them back inside, reel them on in, you know, let's bring them back in. But I keep doing that and it's just like, um, they're completely unaware. So we gotta keep working on this one. This is important that I do this, by the way, because there's fragmenting here. And it's really unique um, type of fragmenting because it's like, um, they're more like echoed apparitions of you than real like dense, tangible like places. But this is loud. This is quite loud on the level of, of how it can be impacting you today. So. Okay, so this place. So, okay, just a second here. This place is also... Um, Something complicated about this one, too. Okay, I'm almost through this. And once I move through this, everything that it is, its meaning and reason for being is going to evaporate, okay? That means that any part of you that thought that it lost itself, it's gone because it, it didn't ever lose itself. We just needed to reconcile that by moving through it and seeing it, self-realizing, and then it just disappears. So on the other side of this is a massive uh, catacombs and there's like um, a holes, like thousands of big deep holes drilled into the ground. And we're very small again in a very big place. 
There's something in these holes here, I don't know. Black goo, there's black goo in these holes. All right, this, um, I'm trying to pull it up and out. I'm trying to get it to react. But what's actually happening is this place is somehow connected to your third eye too. And so there's a big door and when that door opens, it's the light is so bright, it's like blinding. But we, this door has to open and the light has to shine in here. And when the light shines in here, it's going to dissolve all that dark uh, energy and the holes as well. It's going to dissolve the whole rock space. It's going to just dissolve it all. There seems to be an angel in this light. I'm going to keep moving towards it. I just, I need to keep analyzing things here. Hmm. See, the light wants to be, this light just isn't able to um, echo what true light is all about. It's only able to be just artificial light, okay? So this light very much so resembles the light that we all um, see as reflection of heaven and angels and all that. But it, it just seems more like a spotlight. But it does, um, it does remind you of the light you're trying to access. But when I go into it, it's not necessarily uh, true, true. Uh, it doesn't have any energy in it other than I just flipped the light on. I mean, it should be like singing songs. It should be, um, you know, vibrating with love and all this different type of feelings. But there's just no feelings in it. It's just light, light without feelings. It wants to be so badly something more and it just can't be something more. And it's like uh, sadness is starting to well up here because it just like you too desire to reach the light that is true. But what you find is a light absence of the love. And now that that whole space is dissolved and we're just standing in the center of a giant orb and there's this spotlight and this sort of emanation of an angel, but it's too just as, um, it's just like I flipped a light switch on. It's just a projection, and but the light goes in every single direction, okay? But it's not true light. It's not true, true light. I mean, it is, but it's not uh, the love light. And it's... um. What is this? Mm, I'm just ignoring the apparition here. So of the angel, I'm just, it's like a tiny little, it's like a tiny little diamond or something. Just looking at it. And I ask you, what do you know about this thing? I mean, it's like, um, it is a bit sharp. So it's like a tiny little bit of glass shard but it's also kind of diamond-esque and it's really bright i'm actually going to take the amethyst and i'm going to just i'm going to merge the two together <laughs> amethyst with your wonderful like um inhaling of the portal and the black <laughs> what is what is what can we do here about this this needs help the amethyst turns into a body a person and the person is made out of amethyst energy in their purple color. And they hold the star. It's a broken shard from a star, is what they say. And the amethyst holds it. But it seems to, it needs something. I mean, it, it needs something more than what, what we've reached just yet, okay? So the amethyst tells me that it, you know, it shines bright, but it's a, it's a broken part of a star, and that's why it hurts when I touch it, and that's why it's kind of absent all the exp expressions that it actually is, because it is hurt, and um, it, so 
that's all I know right now. I'm just touching it and examining it some more. And they say that um, one of the most meaningful things we can do is, is be at peace with the light and the dark. And so in that way, I just snap my fingers and I just make it go dark entirely. And I ask the darkness to take me where it hurts you most. Because this too is yet another idea. This shard can go back to the start any time, but we have to keep moving through this tunnel. Um, and as we heal everything that goes deeper, it heals everything that is above it. So we just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. And sending the waves of love through all of this. It just, this, this shard is still with us here, but I just... I, I have to do another approach, okay? All right, then I'm taken to where you are um, in your crying a lot. And you're kind of um, like on a stretcher, like where your arms and legs would be stretched uh, kind of to rip you apart in a way. And you, But it's not really stretching you that far. I mean... You're connected to it, but it's not torturing you in like as extremely as it could be. I mean, it's pretty, it's on like level, like low, you know, it's on low, but you're crying profusely here. And I ask you if you remember who you are. And you say, I can't remember. They say, this is a special little spark that comes from you. And it longs to get back to the light and the love of its truth. Did you know that this is a little seed? And it's actually more beautiful than it tries to be. Because it already is it. It already is it. It just needs to be reminded how it can be its own true love within itself. It just needs to find that within itself. And this little shard is the size of a universe. It is the biggest, brightest star I've ever seen in my life. And I'm going to give this back to you because this is a part of you. And I will say uh, it's got a huge impact. It's quite exhausting on the head. And it's just, it's going into your heart. It's like a tiny little broken chip from your very heart. But it's not necessarily that because the layers go so much deeper. I mean, it's like from your soul. <laughs> So I go through the tunnel where this little shard goes and I go through it and I go into your soul and I give your soul a very long hug and I say nothing is going to hurt you anymore and I see the little broken parts turn into a sphere It has no sharp edges at all it looks like a little seed and I just hug you for a really long time. And I say, you've collected yourself. You know who you are, you know where you are. You know why you are, you know what you are. I mean, I don't know, I, I'm saying it like this for a reason. What you've been through has been quite disorienting. It's like, who am I, where am I, what am I, what? And it's like the stars going around and around the head. There's kind of like an echo of that here. So it's like, you know who you are, you know why you are, you know what you are, you know where you are, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know know these things you are yourself mm. okay I've got a I'm gonna stop here all right went a little over on time 
<sighs> and just letting this uh, just fully like transform. Okay, I'm just letting this circulate. That was really important. So all in all, when you are shining bright inside yourself, okay, then nothing else can attach to you. Nothing else can control you. So re bringing the light back into your soul and your heart and all that is going to diminish a lot of what this is about. Also, I mean, that's just one part of this. The other part of this is you have the psychic gift and ability to you need to work with your feelings obviously are tr struggling to do that but um whenever i get messages in my head i i do i don't even want to hear it you know i just want to feel what feels right to me and when i can feel it i can tell where it is where is it coming from um how does it make me feel do i relate to those feelings um you know, how do I process those feelings? So when it's just a message in my head, it's just like, it's it's kind of just like, it's like information. But what does that information actually mean if it doesn't have more to it than this, you know? So to actually go and face this pink um, swirl, to actually go to it and say, why are you here? Actually stand before it and look at it and say, why are you here? I mean, if you can't sleep all night, you got plenty of time. <laughs> Sit up and look at it and talk to it and say, why are you here? And see what it transforms into, okay? No matter what it does, you have to keep looking at it and you have to keep sending um, love and patience, no judgment. But you have to receive um, what is the feeling of what this means to me. Not what that says in my head, but um, what I feel as though it is speaking to me. So when the amethyst is talking to me, it is actually sending me feelings. And through those feelings, I can tell that it is telling me these things. It doesn't say anything in my head. So that can help too. All right, it's all I can do. <laughs> this was a real honor and blessing. So thank you so much for reaching out to me and for the opportunity to check out your energy field and help you feel better. This energy work is going to help you, okay? There's so much self-realization going on beneath the surface. It's planting seeds and all the collective that has been trying to process what it's been going through. It is collecting yourself. It is bringing you back into a inner strength that you've lost, okay, through this experience. It's bringing the light back inside yourself. Not like here, we're going to be a flashlight. No, we just are light. And that comes from within. So that's kind of what that star is. It's like it wants to be an angel. It wants to express this, but it's not. It's just like shining a flashlight. It's not really there yet. It, it needs its truth. It needs its depth. It needs its expressive feelings. And that part is a little chip that you lost in this process here. And bringing it back into yourself is bringing the light back within you. Don't be afraid of the light that you are because that's what makes you the most powerful is the light within. You can have a tiny little fairy and that fairy can be brighter than the sun. Because the fairy knows what, who and what it is inside and it uses its own divine truth to express the love and the light within itself. It's not size that matters. It's how you stand in your in the love within you. So um, that's all. <laughs> Thank you again for this very meaningful experience. And uh, if you want to connect in the future, I would be delighted. Okay, I wish you the best. And for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, Please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, I hope you all have a wonderful day.